Hey, you guys, it's finally time. We are so thrilled to introduce you to our new consulting offer, the six-week Digital Nomad Money-Making Roadmap. This is a program that's going to give you guidance on transforming your career into online work and becoming a successful digital nomad. This six-week Digital Nomad Money-Making Roadmap is a one-on-one consulting offer that's going to help you avoid wrong turns, stay on track, and avoid feeling overwhelmed. We're going to help you find your passion, set clear goals, and make living as a digital nomad a successful and sustainable lifestyle. With our expert guidance, you can learn how to build a digital nomad career that allows you to work from anywhere in the world. We'll help you every step along the way too, from identifying your strengths to finding the best opportunities that match your skills and your interests. Don't wait any longer to start living the life of your dream. Sign up for our six-week digital nomad money-making roadmap today and get on the path to success. You can find more information and sign up at austinandmonica.com slash money-making roadmap. So let us help you transform your life and take it on the road. All right, let's dive into today's episode. All right, you guys, welcome back to another episode of the Profitable Nomad Couple podcast. We are currently sitting in our apartment in Vietnam. This is our first episode that we're recording in Vietnam. We've been here for approximately one entire day, and so far we're really loving it. So we'll keep you updated as we go throughout our month here in Vietnam. Today, though, we really want to dive into the five mistakes that freelance digital nomads make when finding clients. One of the most important things, obviously, for being successful as a digital nomad is having clients. And so when when going through the process of trying to find clients, we see these mistakes over and over and over again. And so our goal here is to help you identify them so that you can avoid them in the future and be wildly successful as a digital nomad. Whenever we hear people talk about the biggest problems that they have as digital nomads, this is always in at least the top five, but normally higher than that. And uh, we notice it's a really big problem. So that's why we want to discuss it. So we're going to go ahead and dive right into it. And the first problem that we see is that you are being too general in your marketing and that you don't target a specific enough audience. Yeah, so this is quite a mindset shift, especially when we're coming from maybe a more traditional, if you're in the States, you know, what we call a W-2 job, where we're used to filling out a resume and sending it in and hoping someone hires us. And in that resume, we are going to cram every possible experience that we have had onto this one sheet of paper in hopes that they hire us. And we want to include, I mean, we're talking everything. We're talking about that, you know, nannying job we had. We're talking about the lawn mowing service we ran for a little bit. We are cramming everything that we possibly can think of that might be of at least a little bit of value to some employer and stuffing it on a one sheet piece of paper and, you know, shrinking our font size and trying to reword things just right so it all fits. And then when we switch into marketing a business or into freelancing, we have that same mentality. We were going to cram as much of the possible things that we could do into our marketing. So we want to talk about, oh, the one time I I wrote an email for someone so I can do email marketing. Or one time I, I made a Canva graphic so I can do social media, I can do graphic design. And we want to be as broad as possible in hoping that somebody is going to want our services. But when doing that, when when being so broad and trying to market to everybody, you end up marketing to nobody. Okay, so when people are looking to hire somebody, they want to hire somebody who is the expert. And when you are the jack of all trades, you are unable to be the expert in anything because you've spread yourself too thin. If email marketing is your jam, don't be a general marketer. Be the email marketer guy. Be the guy that I want to go to to really dig into the strategy of my email marketing and really help me get the ball rolling. By doing this, it helps you stand out from the crowd, first of all. It also helps you be the expert, which ultimately means you can charge more for your services. Yeah, this is what we call in the entrepreneur freelance space niching down. And you don't have to niche down right away. 
You might hear a lot of people say that you do and that the sooner you niche down, the better. We're here to tell you that it's okay if you take some time trying to figure it out. If you jump into something too early, you might paint yourself into a corner and it might not be something you really enjoy. And that's the whole reason you started this business in the first place is to do something that you enjoy. It's okay if it takes a little bit of time and it takes some experimentation and maybe you try a little bit here and a little bit there. But eventually to get successful, you're really going to have to niche down into a target market. Uh, Another example of a way to niche down is if you are a freelance graphic designer, it can be really easy to think if you offer graphic design services to anyone and everyone who needs graphic design, then there's always going to be work, right? So you'll always be able to find somebody. But that is too broad. That's too many people. And it's not specific enough. Instead, you could say, I'm going to be a freelance graphic designer for designing book covers for authors. That's very specific. And you might feel like initially you are too narrowed down and there's not enough people who need that. But there's millions and millions of people out there, guys. There are so many people starting up their own businesses who need help with X and Y and Z that by getting really specific, you're actually speaking to the people more directly and you're actually more likely to get hired rather than less likely. It feels counterintuitive at first, but in our experience and what we've seen from a lot of other people as well, it's much more beneficial. It's much more helpful in the long run if you know exactly who you're talking to and you can offer specifically what they need. I heard a really cool story from Jen Sincero. She's a, she's a really good author. I really, really have enjoyed her books. But she was talking about a friend of hers who was an interior designer who wanted to grow her business, right? And so she would kind of think about like the kind of people she wanted to work with. She wanted to work with people in their homes. Uh, she didn't want to do any kind of business, interior design or anything like that. So she really got focused on what she was wanting to do. And so she got really, really focused on what she wanted. And then she went out and went on on a drive and she would drive around in these neighborhoods and she would look at the abundance of houses around her and just think about how many people out there could use her services. And I would recommend if you ever get to the point when you're niching down and you feel really nervous and feel like there's not going to be enough people who want your services to just remember that there are 7 billion people in the world. Okay. And you only need a few handful of people every year to be successful. And so remember that even though your group of people is smaller than 7 billion, it's still really big. Okay. You still have tons of people in there. So find a way to remind yourself of that. If you ever get nervous while niching down, I guess another example would be back going back to the graphic designer who is designing book covers, go walk through a library and look how many books there are. There are so many books. There are so many authors and there's more every single day. So just remind yourself that there is an abundance of people who need your services. And that leads us right to problem number two. So problem number one is that you're being too general in your marketing and that you're not targeting a specific enough audience. Problem number two that we see all the time is that you've niched niched down to a target audience and you know who you're serving, but you're not targeting their pain points or solving problems for them. What we see the problem stemming from is that you're really not understanding your target audience and who they are and, and what it is that they need. So our suggestion is jump into the world, immerse yourself into the world of your audience. So you you want to understand what makes them tick, what makes them happy, what makes them sad, what are their goals, what are they ultimately striving for their business, and what roadblocks are they coming up against that is keeping them from that goal. And then you are the solution to that problem. So you're going to step in where that roadblock is and solve that problem for them. But you can't attract them and you can't let them know that you are the person to solve that problem unless the way that you speak to them lets them know that you really understand what their problem is. If they don't think that you understand what their problem is, they're not going to ask you to solve it for them. Yeah, a really, really fantastic way to do this that Austin and I have found is by joining Facebook groups or Reddit threads and engaging in those discussions. And then it's super easy to pull from those discussions to see what their needs are. And the coolest thing about doing this and really, really diving into it is it makes your marketing so easy because you just use the words that they're using. Use their lingo. Talk like they do. They're going to tell, they're going to spell it out for you exactly what they need from you, exactly what they need to hear from you to be able to purchase. And it's all going to be so organic and easy. Another really, really powerful way to to understand what your ideal client or your target audience is going through so that you can address their needs better is if you are addressing yourself from the past. 
If your ideal client is you from two years ago, five years ago, 10 or 15, 20 years ago, then you're really intimately going to understand their needs and their problems. And then if you just speak to them as if you're talking to yourself from the past, that's going to be such a natural and easy way to address it. And we love encouraging people to start up businesses and, and work on problems that are their own problems from years ago, because then it just makes it so easy. And it really puts you in a place to understand where they're coming from. So I want you to understand here that that this doesn't mean that you are exactly in their shoes. For example, Austin and I as web designers have never been in a position where we've had to hire someone to make a website for us because we've always been able to do that. But we have been in a position where we didn't have a unified branding that helped us look good and feel good and represent our business. And it really affected the way we showed up. So we would constantly be tweaking our colors, our style, our graphics, and it really, really, really messed with our heads when it came to showing up online for our customers. So we really understand what it's like to not have a cohesive brand, which is why when our clients come to us, we can really identify that need and we can say, look, this is going to affect you in this way. And this is how we can fix that so that you can show up knowing your brand's got your back, show up as your best self, authentically you, and, and let the clients be attracted to you and your personality through your brand. So ultimately, we want you to remember that you are offering a service. That service is a solution to a problem that someone else is experiencing. And the more specific and intimate you can get with under, like letting your clients know that you understand their problem and that, that your business is the perfect solution to that problem, the easier it's going to be to relate and connect with them. And therefore, the easier it's going to be to find and attract them and get them to work with you because they're going to feel that from you. They're going to feel that you understand where they're at. Yeah, ultimately, it's important to remember that you are selling to people. So so make it personable. Make it so that they feel that you understand them and take the time to really listen and to understand them. Okay, so our third mistake that we see freelance digital nomads make is that you don't follow up with your leads. Very, very, very few people are going to purchase from you on their first interaction. You'll probably hear those stories all over the place as you are looking up advice and people are sharing their success success stories. Chances are the first time someone comes across your business and learns about you, they're not going to hire you. It's probably going to take multiple interactions, many touch points. I think there was a study out there where they found that the average amount of interactions it takes for someone to make a purchase is about seven, seven touch points. And they have to be positive interactions. Right, seven positive interactions. And that's that's because it takes time to build trust and people buy from people that they trust. And you have to build this rapport with your clients. So for example, we have a really good friend of ours in the business space. His name is Adam. He's a podcaster and he's told us many times, well, first of all, so he offers free podcast audits. And then from there, he gets people to sign on with him for paid offers and paid packages. And he's told us that there's been many instances where someone's come onto a show for a free podcast audit, and it wasn't until a year later or two years later that they come back to him to hire him for his services. But it took that interaction, that first interaction for his free audit years ago, and then multiple touch points where he was continuing to provide value and consistently putting things out there to let people know what he does and how he can help them. And then over time he warmed that lead into an actual client. So our tip is to not forget to follow up with these people. So if they don't hire you right away, don't get bummed out and don't forget about them. Don't walk away. Continue to nurture them. Continue to add consistent positive value so that you stay on their radar so that when the time comes and they need what you have, you're there for them. Yeah, and I think the key word for what you said was to provide value. It's important to stay on their radar by continually proving to them that you're really committed to their success. So in everything you do, provide value for them. Since you spent all this time getting to know them and getting to know what's important for them, this should be really easy to constantly be giving and giving and giving and solving little tiny problems for them until it comes to the point when they are ready to just hand over their money and they are excited to hand over their money for you to solve more problems for them. Be proactive in this. Show them that you're reliable and willing to solve their problems, willing willing to get in the trenches with them, willing to show them the way out through all of your content and all of these touch points that you have with them. 
So this could look like social media posts. This could be emails that you send out weekly, just talking about whatever it is that you do. For example, we have this podcast that we release weekly, and then we send out emails to people on our email list every week, just talking about what's on this podcast and letting them know. And, and we don't try and sell every week. We just let them know what we have valuable in this episode and let them know, you know, invite them to come listen. We encourage you to have some sort of system like a CRM or some sort of task management system that helps you organize all this so you can keep track of who you've communicated with. So that way no one gets left behind or falls through the cracks. But yeah, ultimately, we just want you to remember to stay in touch with leads, be there for them when they when they need it. This can absolutely be as simple as just having a Google Sheets or a Google Docs where you are keeping track. Obviously, there's a lot of really fancy systems and um, softwares out there that are really, really helpful and definitely worth it if you find a good one. But for now, when you're just starting, it's totally fine to keep keep, keep it all on a Google Sheet and then keeping notes every time you, you talk to them so that you can continue to add personable value to each lead. All right. And that brings us to mistake number four, and that is to know your own value and to communicate it. So it's really important for you to know what you're bringing to the table, how you're helping your clients and how you can solve their problems. And then it's important to know what value that is for your clients. When you're developing your value proposition, it's important that you focus on the needs and the pain points that they're experiencing. Again, your business exists to solve a problem. You are offering the service for them to take things off their plates. So think about how you can make their lives easier or how you can save them time or how you can help them make or save money, okay? Once you hone in on these things, you're really going to be able to explain your value to your clients and you're really going to be able to show them why it's worth it for them to pay you. Part of knowing your value is also knowing what makes you stand out from the competition. What makes you different from other people offering what you offer? Is it how long you've been in business? Is it where you offer your services? Is it something about your process? Is it something about your past and your experience and your insight? What is it that makes you stand out and you different from other people? And that's all part of your unique value proposition. And then make sure you communicate that, whether it's on a sales call, whether it's on your sales page, on your website, on your social medias, in your Instagram messages, wherever it is that you're communicating with your audience, let them know what that is. Okay, and last but not least, our fifth mistake that we see people make all the time is that they give up too soon in their marketing efforts. Marketing takes time and it takes persistence. And a lot of times we have to continue putting out the same call to action for a while before we start seeing results. When Monica and I started our business, we were we worked as virtual assistants and we weren't really getting a lot of leads. We weren't getting a lot of clients. And so we had this great idea to create a spring promotion where we would offer, I think it was like a 20% discount or something to anyone who reached out to us in the month of April. And we put it out there thinking people are just going to flock to us now that we're offering 20% off. And literally nothing came from it. There were there were zero people who responded to that. At the time, I didn't really understand why that was happening. I've learned since then that it takes a lot of time to get these things rolling. Sometimes it takes months of repeating your same call to action in multiple places on your podcast, in your emails, in your Instagram messages, on your, what if you have like a Fiverr Upwork dashboard, like keep putting these things out there over and over again, and you're going to feel like you are beating a dead horse. You're going to feel like you're saying the same thing so many times. It's annoying to you, but that's the point when you said it enough, or at least gotten close to saying it enough. With time, people are going to start understanding or seeing it, and they're going to start coming to you. So don't give up too soon. Yeah. And it's important to realize that while you might be getting annoyed with saying the same thing over and over and over again, people aren't always getting every message that you're sending, right? Through complicated social media algorithms or, you know, just people's lives get busy and they don't open their emails or, you know, lots of things happen. They're not always getting your message. So you need to be screaming it from the rooftops for a long time, longer than you think you should before people are going to start coming it's always hardest to find the first couple of clients, right? And once you kind of are able to get some people in your funnel and get, start making money and get referrals, it's going to, it's going to snowball. It's going to get easier, 
But for right now, don't give up. If you, if this sounds like you, if you're so exacerbated with all of the different things you've tried and you feel like, I don't know why, but the visual of like throwing spaghetti against the wall and hoping it sticks is kind of what comes to mind when I think of a lot of people's marketing where they kind of just throw a bunch of spaghetti at the wall. And if it doesn't stick, then they're like, well, um, I guess I will quit and do something different. You know, I'll get a new batch of spaghetti instead of like boiling the noodles in the water longer for them to cook fully and then have it stick to the wall. That's such a dumb metaphor. I know it is, but that's what comes to mind. Sometimes food metaphors connect with people differently. (laughs) That's true. Sometimes they just make more sense. (laughs) It's true. So, so instead of throwing out your batch of pasta, keep it in the water, keep boiling it, keep up your marketing, keep going. Don't give up too soon because you're about to have a really good plate of spaghetti. I mean, along this whole process, Make sure you're collecting data to know what's working because first of all, we've kind of we've kind of already beaten this point a little bit, but you're not gonna know if you put out one call to action for a week, you're not gonna know what's working about that call to action and what's not. So put it out for months and then you're gonna know, you know, if, if by then people aren't coming or if just a few people are coming to that call to action, then maybe there's something about it that you need to tweak or something about your offer that you need to tweak. But it's gonna take time to collect that data to know what needs to be adjusted. And then don't, I mean, don't be afraid to make the adjustments and then to try out a new call to action or try out a new offer. And then just a little bonus tip. It's going to require you to be in business for a little bit of time in order to do this, but it's best if you can compare your data from one month to a, the same month of the previous year. So compare November 2022 to November 2021, not November 2022 to June 2022. And the reason is there's ebbs and flows and there's fluctuations in the market depending on your industry and depending on the time of year. Uh, certain industries do better during the summer months versus the winter months. And if you're comparing a winter month to a summer month and all of a sudden your income has dipped a lot or the number of people reaching out to you has dipped a lot, it's going to give you a little bit of false data, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So if you can compare the same time, the same time of year to the same time of year, different year, it's going to give you a more accurate representation of what's happening in the marketplace and in your industry. So to recap, the five mistakes that we see people make is you are being too general in your marketing and then that you don't have a specific enough audience. Number two, that you have a specific audience, but you're not targeting their pain points or solving problems for them. Number three, you're not following up with your leads. Number four, you are not knowing your value or communicating it. And number five, you're giving up too soon in your marketing efforts. So if you're doing any one of these five things, take the tips that we've given you today and put them in practice and and make sure you make that change so that you can start seeing an uptick in the leads that are coming your way. Thank you guys so much for joining us in our little apartment in Vietnam for another episode. We really hope that this was valuable for you. If it was, please share it with a friend who could also use some of these tips and then come back in a couple of weeks. We are going to be going over the importance of retaining clients and the mistakes we see when it comes to retaining clients. So we look forward to sharing that with you, having that discussion with you, and we will catch you next week. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning into our podcast. We really hope that you found today's episode informative, valuable, and that you were able to find some actionable insights to apply to your life. If you're interested in taking your career on the road and becoming a digital nomad, then we invite you to explore our newest consulting offer, the six-week digital nomad money-making roadmap. This program is designed to guide you through the process of transforming your career into online work and living a successful, sustainable, and location-independent lifestyle. With our years of digital nomad experience, we will help you identify your passions, set clear goals, and find the best opportunities that match your skills and interests, all without getting overwhelmed. So don't let the fear of taking a wrong turn or feeling lost hold you back any longer from living the life that you've always wanted. Sign up today for your six-week digital nomad money-making roadmap at austinandmonica.com slash moneymakingroadmap and let us help you turn your aspirations into a reality. Thanks again for joining us on this journey and remember to stay curious, stay adventurous, and stay connected.